Hello YouTube, RJ. Hey, remember uh, just a couple days ago when we built the R10 shortwave receiver kit? Well, that's really not been a couple days for me. Here we are in our second video uh, where we need to find out if this little jewel works at all and if it works, how well it works. So here's what we're going to do. I went ahead and went over to the ham desk over there and unplugged my SWR meters lighting 12 volt feed, which will plug right in here and give me 12 volts. And then I plumbed up an AB antenna switch so that I could turn the antenna, my, my ham antennas over to my ham radio or to this. And that's gonna let us do an AB test of the this receiver versus my ham receiver on the same exact antenna. So I thought that would be a, a neat comparison to see how well this works. You think back and remember, you've heard me talk on radios and receivers a lot about selectivity and sensitivity. Let's kind of brief over real quick what those two things mean because I think that is what we'll be judging. Sensitivity is how weak a signal can the receiver receive? Does it hear real well? Can it pick up a very, very weak signal? That's what sensitivity is for. Now sensitivity is great, but sensitivity is useless if you don't have the next thing and that's selectivity. How well does the radio do at picking up the particular thing you're trying to pick up and ignoring other things? That's where you get into image rejection where we've talked a little bit about, and we'll probably get into more detail later as we build our receiver and transceiver. Selectivity is you have things that are close together. Can you pick one of them out clearly or do you hear both of them? Other things will blend in your mixer. That, that are multiple frequencies away. Does your receiver do a good job of filtering out images and make sure that you're not getting things that are on other frequencies being brought into your IF frequency so that you hear them? This is what makes a good receiver. That's what we're gonna be looking at over on the ham desk with this. So I'll go get set up and we'll fire this thing up, see if it comes on, see if it lets out the smoke. If it does, we'll come back to the bench and we'll start troubleshooting. Um, I'm hopeful it'll work. There's a tweaking calibration, if you will, that has to be done on, on this core right here, L10. We'll see if we can pick anything up at all. We'll tweak it, we'll get it the best we can, and then we'll start switching and comparing and see what we can find. So I'll be back with you over at the ham desk in just a minute. Okay, here we are, and here's what I've got. I've got my non-conductive screwdriver to be able to adjust this when the time comes. I've got an adapter into my antenna switch here set up for this. This is A, turn it towards the ham radio and you can see it's receiving stuff. Turn it this way and now it's coming to our little receiver. I've got the ham radio set up on AM. I've pulled my power cord from my backlight from my uh, SWR meter over here to give me 12 volts. Same power supply as power on the radio. And so what we're gonna do now is we're going to, uh, let's plug the speaker in. It's powered up. You can hear a little noise there. We know that we're getting sound in there, so it's on. All we need to do is power up. Now. Holy moly. That was loud. All right, keep the volume down to where you can hear me. Uh, I've got it set up, I'm on, let's see. That's my long, that's my big 80 meter loop. That should work very well for it. And it says it should come up on 9.810, which it did. It says generally adjust the encoder to find an AM broadcast station and then adjust T1 so the noise so the noise is highest and the noise is the lowest. I think they meant the signal is the highest and the noise is the lowest. So let's see what we can find. We are definitely on. We're definitely getting something. Okay, I'm gonna give T1 a turn and see what happens. Turn it. Clockwise first. Oops. 
got weaker and weaker. And that's all the way cl clockwise. So let's go back counter. I'm hearing a lot of stations in there. Okay. Back up the other way. I'm gonna say right in there is about the strongest signal I get, but I'm getting a bunch of stations. I don't, I'm not, not picking one station out very well. Now I'm adjusting the volume on the amplified speakers, but if I understand this right, if I push this, this C1 is volume. It is. And then. I forget what the others are. It's like intermediate frequency and the speed at which it scans. So now you're supposed to be able to hold this, push this in, let go. It's supposed to scan. Okay, no. Okay, no. If you just push it, you're getting the different settings for the frequencies. Okay, so try holding it a long time, I guess. Okay, it scanned, I think and it thinks it's found something. You can probably see the red LED, hopefully, from lighting up. Scan some more. Oops. Gotta remember to hold it a while. Let's um, let's go down. I, I know I was playing on the ham radio. I know there's some broadcasts, like AM broadcasts around 73. Well, I can definitely receive stations, but I can't, I've got other stations in there. It's like, it seems about the strongest right there on that station. It's not very clear. I think that might be that strong station I found on the ham earlier. Let's 7330. No, it's not. It looks like on the ham at 7335. I can see it on the spectrum analyzer here. You can probably make it out here. Center's up at 7335. So let's uh, see. We can definitely hear it. 
I mean, I'm getting it 35 over 9. It's a strong signal. So let's switch back to this. And it's just not very clear on our little receiver. This is kind of funny. My ham radio is picking it up with the antenna switched off. No antenna. I can make it out on my ham. I think you can probably hear that. That's how powerful a station it is. That the ham radio, the FT-710 Yezu can pick it up with no antenna. Yeah. And you hear the multiple stations, it's not able, it doesn't have selectivity. The best I get it is at 7.342 7 on this, 7.335 here. I mean, this signal is very strong. It's, it's over 30 plus now. Well, we got to say, our receiver works, but it sure isn't an FT710 Yezu. Okay, so the question is, does it work? Yes, it works. It receives signals. Is it a good receiver? No, it's, it's not a good receiver. Is, is it worth buying this kit? Probably not, unless you just want practice soldering and you don't care that it doesn't work very well. I can guarantee you there's better kits out there for this. In fact, we're going to be starting a project shortly where we're going to design our own project that we're going to make a kit for everyone as a piece of test equipment that I think uh, ho hopefully a few of you would like to build. I know I need it and hopefully it'll be something you guys will like. So anyway, as far as for what this cost, um, I want to say I paid about 30 bucks for this kit. No, I, I think you could spend 30 bucks on something a lot better than this. It does receive. It's not very sensitive, which doesn't surprise me looking at the circuit and, and, and what's there. Um, it's not very selective at all, which again, the filtering is, well, let's just say the filtering is almost non-existent on this thing. Uh, this thing is not even in the realm of being a real usable shortwave receiver. Nobody would want to listen to shortwave broadcast on this. Can't pick up weak stations. You have to, if you notice the only stations I really could pull out on this, when we would go to them on the ham radio, they were extremely strong signals. They were 10, 15, 20 over 9. Uh, these are some powerful stations. You know, we're using the same antenna, so we're getting the same signal coming into the receiver's front end. So fun to, to put things like this together. But if I was going to spend $30 on a kit to learn or practice soldering or learn to soldering or whatever, I think we can find you some better things than this. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me, checking out the radio. It's kind of interesting to see that it does work, just not very well. And I appreciate you hanging out with me, and I hope to see you in the next video.